afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's portion of the Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Emily, and we're broadcasting live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. I'm joined here today with my friend Dana, who is going to control everything that's happening on the screen behind me. And then we also have James in studio today, and he is at the questions hotline. So we encourage you to participate. If you have any questions about anything that we're talking about or any questions at all, feel free to text us right here uh, at 562-286-1838. Just as a reminder, text, uh, texting rates do apply, so make sure that you check in with everybody if you are a younger viewer and texting in with your parents. So um, so we would love to get your participation today. We've spent a lot of today looking at different types of animals and one of the animals we've looked at is fish. And so this afternoon session, we're gonna be taking a deeper dive into the inside of a fish. Now, uh, before we get started, quick question for you, and you can just say it out loud to anybody that's with you. Have you ever eaten fish or have you ever seen the inside of a fish? Yeah, a lot of times when we eat fish at restaurants and, see, uh, and we eat seafood at restaurants and things like that, it's already been cut and it's already been prepared and cooked, unless you eat sushi, in which case it's just been prepared. And it may not look like what we think of um, when we think of a whole fish. So take a moment right now and imagine a whole fish inside of in your imagination here. So think of a whole fish. What are the things that make it a fish? Um, what we will do is we are going to take a closer look at the inside of a fish, but we'll start with the outside here. So um, in just a second, actually, I'd love, Dana, if you can show us uh, Blue Cavern. Let's take a, couple, a look at a couple of different fish that we happen to have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. You're gonna see what we've got on our live camera right now. So this is inside of one of our largest exhibits. Um, it is uh, my backyard here, my ocean backyard in Southern California. This is a kelp forest habitat. So we can some, see a bunch of fish that are here now. And so maybe this is kind of what you imagined when you thought of a fish. You thought of sort of a long torpedo shape or football shape, a bunch of fins, right? There are actually two types of fish out there. Uh, two categories of fish. There's cartilaginous fish and then there's bony fish. And so today we're actually going to be looking uh, at a bony fish. Inside of this exhibit too, you'll see there's some loose groupings of fish that swim around. Now right now down here, the, it's mostly the big fish and they're not always really together, but you might see there's a small grouping of sargos up here that are swimming together. They're a loose group so it's called a shoal. We also have a, a group of uh, sardines and they school much closer together. Um, the type of fish that we're gonna be looking at today in this class is a mackerel. Mackerel is a pretty common fish. Um, you can fish them off of our coast here in Southern California. We'll take a look at it in a second, but it is a schooling fish. And so we do occasionally see many of them swimming together. So just keep that in mind. I don't think we have any uh, mackerel in Blue Cavern, but we do have a couple on exhibit here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and other places. Um, so we might come back and forth to look at some different fish, but let's go and take a closer look at at the actual specimen that I have. So I uh, collected, or I got this mackerel from our, um, our uh, kitchen area because we sometimes use mackerel um, in the diet of some of our animals. Um, we also use them um, when we teach classes about it. Let me try and change the lighting here so you can see just a little bit. Here, I'm gonna move it up just a little bit. and. I'll turn it too so you can see it's a little bit bright. Let me see if I can get it a little dimmer. So this is a mackerel. Now you can see the mackerel is about the size of a dinner plate. This is actually a, a plate um, that someone would eat off of. This was a um, mackerel that was caught and individually frozen and I just thawed it about 30 minutes ago. Now take a look at this fish and tell me what do you notice? What do you notice about its coloration? Yeah, it has this beautiful dark coloration on the top and sort of a lighter silvery, it looks greenish right here, but it's actually a silvery color on the bottom. So the light, uh, light on the bottom, dark on the top is a fairly common coloration that you see in fish and in fact in other animals as well. And that's called counter shading. Let's take a closer look. We also saw the same sort of football shape here, but let's look at some of the fins. Now the fins, 
the fin on this one isn't in great shape, but we'll take a look and um, see here. So fish swim with different fins and actually um, the, the way a fish moves, you can tell a lot about it just by looking at the, the fins. Um, so for example, this fish has sort of a V-shaped or forked tail um, it's a little bit beat up right here, but you can see it almost looks like a boomerang right here. And there's some fish that have a really ex like extreme boomerang or extreme fork, like tuna. Um, this one has a pretty moderate one. It looks like a pretty good little chevron or V. Um, and that is, means it's a pretty decent swimmer. It's also got two fins on the top. It's got two fins on the side. So the fins on the top are called dorsals. These are called pectoral fins. It's got um, two fins on the bottom here. Um, these are pelvic fins. Um, we've got an anal fin back here, just one. Let me see if I can show you. There we go. Um, and it, this one actually has a bunch of little finlets. It almost looks like teeny little spikes. It's a little hard to tell here. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see the finlets a little bit. Yeah, you can sort of see it looks like little ridge, like a little ridge with bumps right here. These are actually teeny little finlets right here. Um, and you see finlets on pretty moderate swimmers there. Okay, so um, really nice looking fish here. Um, we can also see a couple of other things about it. Uh, when you think about a fish, think about how do you think it breathes and what does it breathe? Yeah, if you said maybe this fish breathes water, that is correct. So they actually breathe water. They breathe water in through their mouth and out their gills. So in through their mouth and out their gills. Dana's going to switch and show us a quick video, a cartoon illustration of that. So you can see right here. So as you can see right here, they bring water in through their mouth and it goes out their gills. When it crosses over their gills, their gills actually take the oxygen out of the water. It sort of does double duty though because their gills also have these gill rakers on the inside and for filter feeders you'll see those gill rakers are even longer and it's kind of cool because they're basically eating and breathing at the same time. That is not something that you and I can do but it's something that fish can definitely do. Um, you definitely know that we can't eat and breathe at the same time if you've ever like choked up on anything. So, uh, But fish, fish totally do that especially some of the smaller fish. Uh, what I was actually going to suggest is maybe you don't have access to a mackerel today, but you could do this exact same exercise with uh, like a tinned fish. Like if you ever go to the grocery store and you can see tins of like sardines or herring, anchovies, things like that. Sometimes you can even buy them with heads on. Um, a lot of times they'll actually have already had been cleaned out. Um, or you can always, if you go to buy like a bait shop or anything like that, they have these types of small bait fish as well. Um, the mackerel, of course, is not a bait fish. It's much larger, but you can do sort of the same type of exploration with those animals as well. So, um, so they, yeah, all fish breathe in water through their mouth and over their gills. So let's take a closer look at one of those gills. So, um, and actually the whole, the whole part here, I'm gonna start with the mouth right here. What I really think is cool about fish mouths is that they've got actually like a bit of what I call origami here. Um, so I'm hoping that you can see it pretty well, but as I open it, you'll notice that things sort of unfold. And that's because fish have what we call a protrusible jaw. And so that means they're, they can stick out their jaw. That's like that fish face that everybody can do, um, right? Like when you think about it, it, uh, it, it actually helps them stick their mouths out and it generates some negative pressure so that they can suck water in. Uh, it's kind of neat too. It's a little bit harder to see and I think it'll be hard to see just because I'm zoomed in, but I will try and zoom out um, and brighten it up a little bit. Let me see if I can show you um, this fish's mouth uh, from the side here. So you can see the protrusible jaw right there and you, they even have like a pretty sharp little tongue um, that's inside. I'm trying to do it so that you can see. Uh, it's bright silver in there. That's their tongue there. Different fish have different machinery in their mouths based on the way that they eat. So the mackerel has a pretty terminal mouth. It ends right here at the mouth at the bottom. There are some fish like frogfish that have a really extreme looking mouth. I think about it kind of like um, 
like the drawbridge of a castle, you know, like it's got a really big opening. So um, a fish like a frogfish can actually generate a lot of negative pressure because they're unfolding a lot more machinery on the side there. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut behind, I'm actually going to cut off this little um, cheek flap right here. This is called an operculum. And this is what covers the gill. So an operculum is a gill covering. Let me make it a little bit brighter so you can see what I'm actually doing. There we go. So I've got my fingers underneath this gill covering. Um, it's, it feels kind of like a tough plastic right there, but it's actually um, the uh, outside, like the skin and tissues of the fish. And I'm gonna just make a big D cut. Um, right here, a big straight line. So it cuts like a D into the, the fish. And so I've pulled off this door or this operculum and on the inside, you can start to see the gills. Now I'm gonna clip out one gill just so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm kind of going in and snipping because um, the gill is shaped like a C, the letter C or like a sideways U. Um, and I'm gonna see if I can just lift one up and lift it out so you can see it a little better. Oops. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna change the lighting too so we, you guys aren't blinded by, by that. There we go. Um, quick little clean up right here. Oops. So you can see we've got a gill out right here. Here's the operculum, that door that I pulled off. This is the gill and this part is actually, it's actually, it's sort of, it's soft in that it's got sort of tissue like on the outside, but it's also got kind of little rays on the inside um, almost like really stiff eyelashes is the way that I think about it, or like false eyelashes. That's what they feel like. This is the part that takes the oxygen out of the water. So it's, um, it's got tissue on the outside. Like, and when I say tissue, I mean um, sort of like the way that our skin and our muscles are tissue on the outside of our bones. So it's got tissue on the outside, and then it's got these great gill rakers on the inside. If you have even more prevalent um, filter feeding, like sardines and things like that, these gill rakers will be really, really strong. Um, it's actually a little bit hard to see the gill rakers. Let me see if I can dim it a little bit and zoom all the way in. Yeah, so there we go. This is the part that collects the oxygen out of the water, the part that's on the outside of the, um, the U shape. The part on the inside is the gill raker, okay? So that's a little bit about our fish here. Uh, the, this is a Pacific mackerel. Um, we are gonna try, if we have time, um, we'll go into the eyeball in a little bit. But what I wanna do is I wanna cut open the side of the fish here so we can see it. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is cutting a filet almost. If you think about like a filet that you've gotten at the store, that's the whole side of the fish. Um, like maybe you've had a filet of salmon or something like that. If you've had a steak, it's a cross section. So it's like a chunk like this. So they'll take like a piece just like this, cut all the way through and that's a steak. A filet is the side. And so I'm actually going to turn this fish over and I'm going to cut a filet off of this side of the fish. I'm going to start at the anal vent. So this is where they uh, poop and pee. Um, and uh, what I'm basically going to do is just cut one long line with this pair of dissection scissors. I'll cut in between the fins here all the way up to the operculum. Okay. Also, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are squeamish, um, this animal does have red blood. You're starting to see it now. So if that turns your stomach or if you are not comfortable with that, um, you should know that this might be a little bit bloody on the inside. Okay. What I do next is after I cut all the way up, I'm going to cut the side of the fish off. Remember I said a fillet is the side of the fish. I'm going to make sure I get down into where the tissue is. And I'm actually going to cut across the ribs and cut down the ribs of this animal. So um, let me just make sure I have enough of it here. And I will cut away at this whole section and I pull and cut at the same time. So I'm actually cutting through ribs. I can show you what those rib bones look like in just a moment. And we'll see. 
this fish. Ooh, this one actually looks a lot nicer. I pre-cut one. This one looks a lot nicer than that other one. Um, so, and then essentially what I've done is I've removed the fillet here. You can see there's bones in here. So when you buy a fillet at the store, a lot of times they'll pull some of these really big bones out. And then you, you of course, have to sometimes take the bones out as well. But that is like the whole muscle that's on the outside. Oops, sorry, it goes this way. On the outside of the fish and I've pulled it off like that. So now we have a nice little window to the inside of the fish. I'm actually going to trim it up just a little bit so that we can see into it a little bit better. And then I'm going to change the lighting for you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom in on this and then I'm going to stand in front of this to, sh to answer some questions. So I um, hope you don't mind the view everybody, but I'm just going to see if I can change the lighting. Oops, let's make it. OK, so the bright, the background is going to be kind of blinding white. So sorry about that. Let me turn it just a little bit. Is that tolerable? OK, so the background is really blindingly bl bright, but um, all right, so this is the inside of our mackerel. I'm, I'm in a green screen, so it's not huge. It's, I'm just standing in front of the image. Um, and so uh, we've gotten a couple of fish, a uh, fish, couple of questions about fish. Um, somebody wrote in, are all gills that color? Um, they're sort of more or less that color in my understanding. Um, sometimes you'll see prepared specimens. So you might go to a museum and see someone who has meticulously removed all the tissue off of the bones. And in that case, you might only see the bony parts of it. So you might just see all white. Um, but and that's for a museum preparation. A lot of times, if you're just going fishing and you, you know, you are um, seeing the inside of a fish, it, it is mostly like that reddish color. Um, do all fish have uh, those rakers? Um, I think that they have at least some element of those rakers. They're more prominent in fish that filter feed and less prominent in fish that do not filter feed. Um, at least that's my understanding of it. Uh, so, and then you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but, but by, for the most part, I, I think that they actually do have those parts. Okay, so let's take a look now inside of our fish here. Um, so they have a lot of the same types of organs um, that, that all vertebrates have. Um, so when they eat, of course, they eat through their mouth um, and they digest. It goes into an esophagus and then it goes into their stomach. Now, I can tell you um, this animal's stomach is actually back here. So this right here, this um, sort of almost maroon colored, in my view it's maroon, and I think in your view it's pretty red, actually. Let me see if I can make it just a little bit dimmer. Is that, does that look okay? Here, maybe if I zoom in too. Okay, there we go. So um, when, you, when you look at the inside of an animal, um, all the vertebrates, all the animals with backbones have relatively similar features. So this thing right here that is really smooth and it's sitting on top of another organ here, this is a liver. All livers, your liver sits on top of your stomach um, and it is wedge shaped, sort of triangular shaped. So you can see this has a big old lobe like that. So this is a liver and it's sitting on top of um, digestive uh, the digestive system. So like there's a stomach underneath this. Um, it's a little bit harder to see on this particular one. And you can see right here, you probably see a lot of these like finger-like projections right here. These are part of outgrowings from the digestive system. These are called pyloric cica. And so they're actually, they increase the surface area of their digestive system. We do not have pyloric cica. I sometimes wish that I did so I could take more time to digest everything and get the most out of it. But uh, that is not something that humans have. And so that is um, the fish right there. I actually prepared, as I mentioned earlier, another fish that has um, a really nice liver and stomach. So I'm going to bring it over just so you can see. So similarly, I, we mentioned we had this like lobe shaped or sort of triangular, almost triangular shaped, smooth looking organ. That's the liver again. Um, let me see if I can 
increase the contrast just a little bit. This one, on the other hand, where this one does not have a lot of digestive, like you can see the pyloric cica here, but you don't actually see the stomach really well. The stomach you see really well on this one. This is a stomach. I know it's a stomach because it's bag shaped and the liver is sitting on top. So it's got a big um, bag end here. You can see it has sort of a point at this end and all the pyloric cica. This one has sort of denser pyloric cica, but they're all sticking off of that. So all of this is aided in their digestion. Um, I might actually cut this open to see if there's anything inside this one's stomach. This one doesn't, the one on the top doesn't have much um, in its stomach and it actually doesn't have a ton. You can barely see the stomach on this one. Um, so that, that's cool. I'll open up the stomach in just a minute. The other thing I wanted to do though, is you can actually see one other difference between my two fish here. So um, I don't know if you guys can notice this. It looks huge next to me right now. But um, this one has this smoothish, like small finger-like projection that goes here. It's actually paired. There's one on the other side. And this one has a really big one that looks really different than this, but they're sort of in the same spot. They're right behind, sort of downstream from the liver. These are their reproductive organs. So I actually have a male right here, and I have a female right here. You can actually sort of see the ova, like the eggs, inside of her, um, inside of her ovaries right there. So that's kind of cool. Um, I was really hoping that I picked a male and a female. Um, females are a little bit, or in my experience, they've been a little bit bigger, and so I look sort of a little thicker. And so um, that's what I was hoping for. And I got one. I got a male and a female here. So um, we are lucky. Um, so we can see that on the insides. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat is if you look on the inside at the very top, just to orient you, remember I cut away at a bunch of ribs that were all along here. Um, there's dark tissue at the top. Those are their kidneys. They're the back. Our kidneys similarly are at the back on either side of our spine. So there's a spine in the middle there. Our kidneys are in the back sort of around on either side of our spine. So same thing with, um, with fish. So it turns out a lot of vertebrates, um, we have different body shapes, but the systems are sort of oriented in the same way. Um, so there's a spine in the middle there. You can see the spine a little bit better on my male fish right here. So you can actually see this spinal column right here. Um, this is where I cut the ribs off, but he also has um, like ray fins or I'm sorry, um, bones on the top of his um, spine. So let me, okay, now you can see it a little bit better. You can see there's, here's his spinal column right here. He's got kidneys right here, and then there's bones on the top. I'll show you a model of skeleton um, that's also been cleaned up a little bit before we get into the stomach of this critter. So I'm gonna just show you this uh, model that I have is actually a perch, so a different type of fish, um, but I'm gonna just show you so you can get an idea of what we're looking at here. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom out and maybe darken it a little bit because it's very, very bright. But you can see similar to, so this is a perch, as I mentioned, but similar to our fish, it's got a backbone that runs all the way down. I had cut away those ribs, but it still has bones on the top of its backbone um, before you reach the fin, um, the fin rays. So um, they've actually got a whole bunch of bones there on the inside of them. Um, and you can sort of see the top bones um, on my specimen, on the male specimen. Uh, so this is a nice sort of view of it cleaned up. This is what I would call like a museum preparation uh, of, a, of a fish, okay? So it's got all the tissue taken off of it and you can only see the bones. Um, for those of you that are interested in being ichthyologists or marine biologists, when you take your ichthyology class, you'll do a preparation like this, I guarantee it. Everybody has to do it. So, um, so it's kind of neat, kind of interesting to think about. All right, we're gonna go back to our fish um, in the last little bit that we've got here, and I promised you, um, we're gonna zoom back in, way zoom in, because it turns out you can actually see these pretty well. So once again, this is my male fish here, and this is my female fish. Um, you can see the male has these testes right here, and the female has ovaries, oops, sorry about that, ovaries right here. So really different tissue types there. Um, and that's because they have different reproductive organs. Um, my male fish happens to have uh, kind of a puffy stomach. It might not have anything in it, but we'll go ahead and cut it open and just take a look. So 
Um, so as I mentioned before, this is the liver. This is the pyloric cica. So these are all those little finger-like projections that increase the surface area. I'm gonna go ahead and make one quick incision into his stomach and just see if he's eaten anything that we can find. So, oh, he does have a full stomach. Um, we might not be able to tell what, what everything is, but why not look, right? <clears throat> Um, I have on occasion cut open these and found squid um, and things like that. So I'll let you know, this part is muscular, just like your stomach is muscular. It's kind of a tough muscle. So, and I have to peel it open and I can see that there's all this digested material on the inside. So um, for those of you that get queasy, you might wanna turn away. Um, I am gonna scoop a little bit of this digested material out so we can take a look. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to see much of anything, but what I'm doing is I'm just going to spread it out here. Sometimes you see like little scales. Um, I'm not actually seeing anything that I can tell quite what it is. There might be actually little scales and stuff in here. Um, it just depends on what, they're, what they've been eating before they are caught. Yeah, I don't see a ton of other things. It just looks all digested. It just kind of looks gooey. Okay. Well, always worth checking. <laughs> we, are, we just found a lot of half-digested material here. I can't actually even tell um, what some of that is. If there's a fish expert out there, uh, feel free to email us live, L-I-V-E, at L-B-A-O-P. You can tell me what you think you see there. Um, but I, it's mostly digested um, material there. So um, great look at the inside of this fish. I want to do one more thing as we wrap up, and that is I want to actually look at the eyeball of it. So, because um, I, I think before I started taking classes where I learned about animals like this, I never really thought about eyeballs. But it's kind of, it's kind of neat to think about eyeballs. So eyeballs, of course, are how we see. And um, eyeballs have a lens inside of them. And so what I'm going to do right now is I am going to um, go inside the fish's eye and I'm going to take the lens out. Now, you have a lens on the inside of your eyeball too. You also have, your eyeball is kind of like a bag with liquid in it too. That's why if you've ever gone to the eye doctor, for those of you who wear glasses or have corrected vision, they always check the pressure of your eye because you actually have fluid that's on the inside of your eye. Um, and so what I'm going to do, you're going to actually see me, I'm going to have to pierce the eye um, so there is liquid inside. I just want to let you know, but I'm going to get the lens out because that's actually the cool thing. The lens is the part that focuses the light that comes in before um, it processes, uh, you know, before it's shined on the inside and then the animal can process what it sees. Um, our eyes work very similarly. So um, I'm going to do that right now. As a reminder, um, this is full of fluid, so it is going to have fluid come out of it. I do want to let people know, for those of you who are a little bit more squeamish. Um, yeah, okay, maybe I'll try and zoom in big time on the eye here. Okay, there we go. So here's my female fish. Um, the eye is, as I mentioned, very liquidy on the inside. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of pressure or I might go behind. Actually, we'll see. Let me just cut it and see what happens. Um, sometimes it takes a couple of tries to get it. So I just pierce it and the liquid comes out. Let me see if I can get the lens out of there. Oh, there we go. So close. I'm going to use forceps to get it out. Okay, here we go. So there's a lot of liquid, but this right here, oops, sorry, this right here looks like a little pearl. That is the lens of uh, the eyeball. I just dropped it. <laughs> here we go. Here, it's right here. All right, so let me see if I can, um, I'm going to put it at the edge of the plate right here, so maybe you can see it a little bit better. It almost looks pearl-like, and it's hard. Okay, so there we go. It's right there. Um, just for scale, you can have a look. I have a, I have a pair. I'm sorry, uh, James. I'm going to make everything that you loaned me dirty. But just for scale right there, um, it is uh, like a little less than a quarter of an inch. Actually, it's far less. It's like an eighth of an inch. I'm sort of between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. So it's a small pearl-like bead. And that is actually um, the lens of the eyeball. So similarly, um, 
animals that have uh, visual uh, processing will have lenses just like this. So really neat little little thing right there. All right, so um, I'm going to zoom back out. Maybe we can go to Blue Cavern, Dana, and not have this in the background. Um, and I'm going to answer just a couple of um, other questions. Um, we had somebody uh, ask a question, why is one eye so cloudy? Um, sometimes we get fish with like cloudy eyes because they've been damaged or maybe they weren't as healthy when they were originally caught. And that's actually one reason why we inspect all the fish that we feed out to our animal collection. If they even see the beginning of a cloudy eye, we don't feed that fish out to our seals, sea lions, sea otters, things like that, um, or our sharks or other animals. So um, that's actually an indicator that we use to approximate health sort of fish quality or um, the healthiness of a fish that we would feed out. Um, can you tell a male uh, from female on the outside? Um, I don't know if this is official, but I typically um, find that the bigger ones are the females and the slightly smaller ones are the males. And that's especially true, um, like if they've, if the, like the one that we had had really big ovaries. Um, and so that's what makes it a little bit bigger um, when you look at them. Um, but that might not be the case for every fish. There are some fish, of course, that are dimorphic or there's two different, they look separate, like the males look different than the females. Um, this fish, right, oh, it just looped back uh, to a highlights reel. But we have one fish, these two fish, um, the male and female look the same, but we have one fish called the California sheep's head that I was trying to point to. Um, that looks different than the female. Um, still others, uh, they look the same and you can't really tell the difference. So this is a male sheep head. You can tell because he's got pink in the middle, the um, sort of blackish gray at the head and tail, and then he's got a bright white chin. The female looks a little bit more drab. She's like uniformly colored, pinkish, silverish, grayish is what I think of. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more grayish, but they, they all, both of them have that white chin. So it just depends on the type of fish. Um, and with other species of animals, sometimes the male is bigger, the female is smaller. Um, sometimes the female is bigger, sometimes the male is smaller. It really depends on the species. So great questions today. I hope that you enjoyed taking a look um, at the inside uh, of the fish. Um, we did get one more question. Um, why is their lens white while ours isn't? I actually don't know the reason for it. I would guess that the chemical composition is different and the flexibility is different, um, but I actually don't know why the coloration is, is different. Um, a squid lens is also a little bit different than that too. So, and that's an animal that processes a lot of data as well, visual data. Um, anyway, thank you for those great questions today. I hope you had a good time checking out the inside of a fish. Um, I encourage you the next time you go to a market or go fishing or anything like that, check out what you can see. See what's left of the fish because um, sometimes they clean out the guts and things like that. Or maybe you've gone fishing. You can check the inside of the fish then. Um, or maybe you walk on the pier and you see somebody that's caught a fish recently. Uh, it's really cool to see the inside of these fish. It's so very different than what you and I would get at a restaurant um, when we're eating seafood. So um, great time exploring with you. Hope you have a wonderful day. Um, stay tuned if you want to for our next class. Have a great day.